Babe, I got a question for you. Yes. Why is everybody such assholes <laughs> lately? <laughs> Gang, what up? We in the building. My name is Swaggy C. This is my wife over here, Bailey Hi. Amethyst. Um, and today we got a lot of topics to talk about, but uh, most importantly, we're going to start off with boundaries. I think a lot of people uh, have Lack issues. boundaries. Yeah, or, or, or respect. The respect the boundaries. Thank you. And, and we're not going to like bash anybody. We're just going to talk about our experiences, mm-hmm. obviously, with our life. It's our podcast. It is what it is. Um, but report no, on news, baby. That, like, okay, no, dead ass. People need to learn to establish boundaries in every single aspect of their relationships with other people. And I feel like, especially in like my family slash most black communities, there's absolutely no boundaries and people just do whatever the heck they want. So when you grow up and you decide, oh, I want to set a boundary, people are flabbergasted. Yeah. Like they're shook. They don't know how to react. Yeah. And I think it, it's friendships as well. I think both like families and friendships like it's like whenever you grow or evolve into a new person and you say this is who I am they're like well you weren't that way at 16 or 19 exactly. I'm not 16 or 19 Ooh. no more <laughs> no and let me talk about it because why do people not allow you to grow into the human that you want to be like if you love me and you believe in me you should allow me to evolve into the human that I want to be and then when that change happens you need to respect that why are you pushing me into the box that I was when I was 16 or 17 I am a grown ass woman yeah which is which is the the beauty of our marriage so we've you know, we've been married or together for five years, married for four, and we've allowed each other to grow as time goes on. Like mm-hmm. when you met me, I was straight out the hood and acting crazy yeah, and yeah. gang signs on TV. That's loud. A, yeah, but that's another podcast episode of like allowing your partner to evolve. Exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. But then you let me grow into like this quiet, mild mannered, mm-hmm. you know, entrepreneur type thing. You know, so but I don't know. I don't know. I feel like um and you can talk more about this. This may be like a, a more of a Midwest thing. Yeah. More so for friendships, I would say. The reason I say that is because I've had the same best friends since I was 14, 15 years old. I've known uh, Maurice Hill and Tyvon Jones. I know Mo since I was 13, mm-hmm. since he was 13. Now you're calling out their government name. I don't care. And Ty, <laughs> I don't care. Hey. And uh, Jones since uh, I was 16. But mm-hmm. I've had the same best friends for a decade and a half. Mm-hmm. And in that time period, we haven't had a single argument, a single disagreement, a single misunderstanding in terms of boundaries. I went from chilling with them all the time and babysitting with Jones and playing basketball every day with Mo to like, talking to them once a week Mm -hmm. and there's been no issues Mm -hmm. and i feel like when it comes with you and your friends or people in the midwest and maybe it could be other parts of the world i just don't deal with it myself it's like if you deviate from what you were they either take offense to you with it or you hear about it from other people that they're talking shit about you yeah yeah yeah. so talk more about that and why that is and how you like deal with it i guess so i think the first thing that i'll say is and everybody from the midwest knows this most people don't make it out of the midwest so there's this whole like hollywood mentality that i've gotten since i was like young of like oh you're hollywood like oh you da 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 so people usually like grow up in the midwest and then they go to school just to be, be able to like feed back into the community so they want like i dead ass and i told you this i had a ex where we broke up and he literally was like i'm like what do you want to do in five years and he's like i really just want to like throw barbecues in my backyard so like i just want to like <laughs> yeah like i just want to like get a house you know in raytown shout out to raytown and have barbecues in my backyard and i was like we're not gonna work out because there is no growth. no growth so people really do get offended when you grow because then they, they're like oh well how do you feel about me and it's like my feeling about you hasn't changed but i can't be the same person who spent eight hours on your couch all saturday At all. that's not that's not a part of my thing so they're like oh you just leaving i've been here for four hours <laughs> like that was a four, valuable four hours of my time and Absolutely. i i gotta go so Absolutely. it's really hard to outgrow those mentalities as a midwesterner because we are very like family you know like centered and we do like quality time i think is like a huge love language in the midwest yeah it is um and that does suck too because like you said we grow whether it is individually or things happen such as marriage or mm-hmm. kids and like Ooh. i want people out there to know if, if you're watching this like flat out like we can be best friends or even brothers and sisters um and i'm not you know in agreement with andrew tate in this regard because he's just like you know uh, a brother or a sister or whatever <laughs> got to come first like i i understand that but like when you get married and it's somebody who's like the love, love, love of your life and you're having kids with them, that person is first, no matter what. Like that person becomes your number one priority and everything else can be two, two A, two B, whatever the case may be. Is that Why me? Are you is that me? Oh my gosh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
But I feel like friends have an issue with that. And yeah. I feel like a lot of your friends and family members had an issue with you putting me first. Yeah. And it's like, this is my husband. This is, hey, a, this is, you know what I mean? Let's talk about it. Okay, so boundaries. And I'm going to tell this story, quick little story time. Swaggy will attest to this. I had a particular friend who I will not name, but everybody knows who this friend is, who had the nerve to say when I got my fiance, me and Swaggy were engaged at this point. She had the nerve to say, um, well, I've been here through all of Bailey's um, booze and we'll see if you make the cut. If I decide to like you. To my then, face. Yeah, well, on FaceTime, like basically like that. No, straight like that. You know I mean? And I was shook because I'm like, girl, this is not a boyfriend. This is a fiance. Immediately it started off on the wrong foot. No, it was crazy. You know I mean? And I was just like blown away. And then that's when I really knew. I was like, I have an issue with boundaries because for you to think that it's okay for you to say this to a man that's like in my life. Girl, you done lost your mind. And a fiance. Because it's yeah. not like, you know how girls <laughs> talk all the time or guys talk all the time to each other. Yeah. So like if, if me and you were just dating. Yeah. And she texted you privately. Well, let's see if he makes a cut because this last person. Yeah, that's, that's a whole that's different thing. Different. That's a whole different thing. No, she. This is she, our first conversation. She pulled up on him on FaceTime. And first of all, it was like kind of throwing me under the bus of like, dang, Bailey's been through a lot of boy faces. That too. In her that life. too. Like, yeah, I'm you know like, what I mean? Okay, yeah. yeah. And then secondly, it was just like, well, I'm the one who's going to be around no matter what. So you need to. You she need did to say that. No, no, no. She, she did say that. I'm going to be around no matter what. Yeah. And now it's five years later. And she ain't around. And she's not around and I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like Right. But if you, you would have flipped the script, like if you as a like a fiance team, or team husband player or something. says to like it's like crazy. Girl best friends, y'all need to work on yourself because y'all have double standards. If a man came into your girl best friend's life and it's like, Hey, listen, you gotta prove yourself to me, see if you're gonna make the cut, you would have a fit. Absolutely. So there's no way that you should ever say that to a man in your friend's life. No matter if you're thinking it, girl, keep it to yourself. Keep it or, to yourself. Or text your friend on the side. Yeah. But never in your life yeah. ask a man that's not your man to prove yourself to like that it just doesn't make sense like why is my man proving himself to you when he's not dating you especially because you already approved me you said yes to getting engaged oh. so like if you approve me it's like okay point, everybody needs to get on board and i feel yeah. like that happens with a lot of family members where you know yes a boy a man and, and, and a woman or a man and man woman whatever the case may be are engaged <laughs> yeah and they're already engaged yeah. and family members around them be like well i don't know if this person's right for you I decided that. No, that's a fact. That's and not you're your already opinion. causing strife in my relationship because if I tell my partner, which I'm totally able that's to a, do, that's a fact. I can share anything with my partner. If I tell my partner, oh, they feel a certain type of way about you, or oh, you know, they said, I don't know if we're going to be a good match. Look up five years down the line, we got baby. So now, if he doesn't feel comfortable or she doesn't feel comfortable with you around the kid, guess what? You did it to yourself because you was talking, you know what, on something that did not involve you. And now that person, that kid is half that person. So if they don't feel comfortable around you or they feel like you're not in an agreement with the marriage or the partnership, then you technically are not invited to the next phase of life. Then you're mad and you're like, and you're oh, mad. I'm entitled to the child. You're not. It's not yours. Yeah. Like, and the issue with crazy. that is that like that other spouse will never forget it yeah especially if they actually stay, like make the cut stay around yeah. like or they have a memory like swaggy c who remembers every freaking thing that's ever been said in life listen yeah. anybody ask me anything i'm honest you can't change my yeah, story yeah, yeah. you feel me I, I i'm honest flat out yeah um but yeah no so so talk more about uh boundaries as well in terms of yeah. like learning to i guess like say yes to an apology um, and like I don't know go through disrespect versus cutting them off completely the reason I say this is because okay. you know there's some friends yeah. who will disrespect you or me per se and I feel like with me the moment I feel disrespect or somebody talking reckless about me like they're, done. they're 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 done yeah and this was like the first time I've seen you do that where mm -hmm. like oh now I'm done like I'm flat out done like you, you've done enough yeah so talk about that because I know there's some people out there who will have a friend who disrespects them I know plenty of friends who disrespect each other on a, a drunken Saturday and then Sunday they're still <laughs> Best friend. And the disrespect is very, very no, bad. You know what I was thinking of? I was sorry to bring this up. But the Anissa and Nani thing where Anissa threw noodles at Nani. Hot, were you there? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, I hot noodles there. at Nani and called her all kinds of names. And yeah. then they're best friends the next day. Like, that, I, I don't that does that. not fly with me. That doesn't fly with me um, at all. But that does happen. Okay, so I'll talk you through it. Swaggy actually has no recollection um, for any people-pleasing mentality. So when I go through these struggles, like, of people-pleasing or anything, he's like, I don't understand. Um, so no. yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't, I understand. <laughs> give it. Listen, I understand catering to people and their love languages and how they fit, but I don't understand making myself uncomfortable to please somebody else just because they want that. I don't, I don't understand that at I'm all. From New York. <laughs> <laughs> okay. From New York. Anyway, CT, what up? No, for real. Okay. So as a chronic people pleaser. I have struggled with um, putting my needs before anybody else's. So it's almost like a like a trained like quality I have of mine of like, oh, somebody's upset, let me like panic and make them okay. So with that being my like go-to personality, a lot of people have grown up in my um, 
like my relationships relating to that of like, mm-hmm. oh, this is how Bailey treats me. No matter what happens, she's always going to be there for me. Or if I show that Absolutely. I'm uncomfortable, she's going to cater to me. So that's how they get my attention. Absolutely. Instead of being like mature adults or complaining, they're like throw fit. So then I'm like, oh no, like let me save you. Mm-hmm. And I think being with you has taught me like I don't have to save people. Like they're grown ups and they need to figure themselves out. <laughs> so recently I've been holding people accountable. It's not that the love is lost. I actually Absolutely. do not like have like the, the, capacity to be like i hate you no i'll never hate anybody but i might have to distance myself from you for boundaries because i can't allow myself to be taken advantage of so if somebody shows true remorse and they actually like acknowledge their wrongs then i'm fine forgiving them but if you can tell that it's just like i'm sorry to get what you want or i'm manipulative i'm sorry then they have to be cut or or they do it five times in a row yeah like you know what i mean like it's i feel like this person and other people as well not just this person i thought that one yeah they've Mm -hmm. done it Several times, and it's just an apology every single. It's yeah, like, your apology doesn't count anymore. This time, an apology doesn't yeah, count yeah. anymore. You know what I mean? I need to see like change action. Yeah. Um, and who knows? Maybe we will a year from now. But right now, like, I want people out there to know that it's okay yeah. to cut people off. I don't care how long you've been friends with them or known them. If something is going on and you feel disrespected, and it happens on several occasions, you need to protect yourself first, yeah. no matter what. And I feel like that's what we do. No, and that's what I've like been learning to do. Um, it's very important. Like, and I don't care. Like, I will look dead in the eye. I don't care if you're my mom, my grandmother, my sister, cousin, brother. Does not matter. You can be my twin sister. I don't have one. But I will cut you off if you're being disrespectful because life is too short. My peace is too important. And no disrespect will be tolerated on this side. And it's funny because, like, you say that, and that's actually a fact. And you've done that over this entirety of this year. I'm very, very proud of you. I'm currently not speaking to my own grandmother. (laughs) I'm proud of that. You know what I mean? Like, no. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy because, and the reason I say that is because, like, I think you've seen it from me as well, whereas, like, with you, it's like, let's say over a three-month period. No, let's just say a week period, right? Mm-hmm. Sunday to Sunday, like, I've gotten so much work done, and I've been productive, and I've done all this extra stuff, and, like, let's say Sunday and Monday, you're productive, and then Tuesday, you're trying to be productive, but then somebody gets on your nerves, and, like, it, like, ruins your whole day. Yeah. You know, and Wednesday, you're productive again, then Thursday... You're trying to fix it with that person and it, and it comes up it again. comes up again yeah, you know yeah. what i mean and it's just like now you got a point to where all right i got a lore i got a, a daughter right now i got a husband i got a, a nice house in puerto rico yeah. i don't got to deal with none of that stuff no more yeah. you know what i mean so i'm, no, I'm proud seriously. of you for setting boundaries Thank um you. but also and, and i think the last thing i'll say about boundaries is please talk about uh this is left field but weddings as well um reason i say that's because <laughs> i know well it's your friend but it's, we kind of got a shared friend now shout out to you know who um where it's like She's getting married to, Not you know, a you nice. Shared <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, she'll like that. Okay. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like she's getting married to somebody, but like the family of of somebody else is kind of taking over in terms of wedding and plans and, and mm-hmm. like inviting and stuff like that. And like, yeah. it's just not what she wants for her wedding, but yeah, like. Yeah. It's her wedding. Okay, but don't be sharing all her business. Okay, now. I'm, I'm I, okay. I'm not. She doesn't, she she won't share with nobody else. No, you know what this I mean? is just a, something we've, we've talked about. Um. I think, and that's another thing, like that's a whole nother subject. We can do a podcast on that when she's ready to talk about it because you know she'll have things to say. But I think establishing boundaries like early on and you're like, even like as soon as your wedding with your family members, your friends, your teacher from fifth grade, and you have to say, like luckily she's really good at being like, I'm sorry, that's not gonna work. You know, like this is a hard situation, but I'm sorry, like the guest list is limited. But like y'all gotta really stand up for yourself because this is your day. These are your special events and you'll look back and you'll be mad that people bullied you into doing something that was not like your choice. So I will say like, it doesn't matter if it's your five-year-old's birthday party. If you want it a certain way, you need to be demanding and you need to say, this is what I need from y'all or else people are going to be running your life forever. That's and a you fact. don't want that. And, and, and to, to talk about that, there was only one situation where that kind of happened with us. Not our wedding. We, we stood up for ourselves. Our wedding went from 300 people to eight. To two. To two. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It like, was me and Chris. We was <laughs> very, very happy with that and don't have any regrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we had a, a, a beautiful uh, gender reveal last year. Yes. And we had a very, very small, intimate gender reveal. We invited yeah. who we wanted to invite. It was the best, the best uh, day ever. Yeah. And then your family, like, kind of forced you to have a baby shower yeah. in Missouri and we didn't necessarily want to do it but we did to please them. No, they did. And then it was a bunch of people who yeah. we like You didn't know. I knew no, all no, the no, people. No, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying yeah. I was going to say that. Okay. I was going to say that. I was going to say a bunch of people like a few people who we didn't even get along with but they were there just oh, because a thousand percent. it was Missouri, you know what I mean? And it's family. And and yeah, it yeah, kind of yeah. went against our boundaries, Me, you know. That's what I'll say. 
the whole it's family excuse the whole i'm your mom i'm your blah 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 drop it it's done it's dead walk away from it because like if people are rude or disrespectful i don't care if they're family they cannot be in my life like swag said something very like important of like where i'm from if we don't have anything nice to say to each other or we're not on like good terms you're not invited and like that needs to be continued like like, stop inviting people who really don't like you stop bringing people to the functions that are going to gossip about you later or gossip about your function later like if you have so much to say you can find about all this stuff on instagram like everybody else like i just don't think that i deserve people in my space or in our space are sharing those happy intimate moments like i'm giving you my energy and you're going on and like shitting on it no so I would if I could change something about like my family it would be that of like if I say I don't want something I don't care if it's traditional I don't care if like oh well you have to do this this is a rite of passage screw that I don't want it don't make me do something that I don't want to do well you've done that recently you know what I mean like, I have but, I mean? but I, I, I've the been baby attacked I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to uh, I have been attacked. outline to the fans out there that like yeah. the baby shower was the one time where yeah. we were like alright maybe it can work and then our boundaries were completely yeah. like not cared for and then we regretted it whatever cool yeah. but now as time goes on you're just like nope yeah. This is the Lord's birthday. This is who's coming and this is not coming. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Yeah. This is the birth. Only the mothers are coming. Like, yeah. And you're not apologizing for that. And that's what I want to commend you yeah. for. Ladies, gentlemen, anyone, stand up for yourself because literally like nobody else will. And if you keep getting run over, people will think it's a part of your personality. And that is not a part of your personality. Like stand up for yourself um, and don't be crazy like I am where I just back everything into a corner and then explode on people and they think I'm crazy. No. That too. No. Communicate oh, all the way through. That was an emphatic no. No, because <laughs> you know I'm like angry. No, I'm tired of this. Like, no. Do you think we should uh, talk about uh, blended families on this podcast? No, we no? should save that for later. Okay, we'll save it for later, <laughs> guys. Thank you for uh, watching, and yeah. uh, I'm your host, Swaggy C, and it's my other host, Bailey Amethyst, and I'm a, a other host. We're co-hosts. Um, co-hosts. But please no. make sure that you guys like, comment, subscribe, drop um, the subjects that you guys want to talk about in the comments because we want to talk about what our community wants to talk about and we're here for y'all. Um, also, let us know if you guys think we should do an advice column. Like, come on, talk to us. Later. Love you, gang. <laughs>